Hi, second grade, Mrs. Snyder here. We are going to start a few lessons on free verse poetry. Um, it's a type of poetry that has some rules to it. So let's get started. A couple things that we're going to do today are we're going to take a look at some poems that we're used to. Then we're going to take a look at what free verse poetry is. We're going to do a little bit of a review and then you'll have some ch a chance to practice. So poems that we are used to. I want you to think back to kindergarten or preschool or daycare or being at home with your mom or dad or your grandma and grandpa. And I want you to think about some nursery rhymes you may have heard or some poems you have heard. Think about those poems or those nursery rhymes that have lots of rhyme and they have a good beat to them or a good rhythm and they're silly and they're fun. Can you think of a few? Let's take a look at a few today. So this was one of my favorites. I really, really liked Shel Silverstein when I was a kid. And Shel Silverstein wrote some goofy poems. Let's take a look at this one called Backward Bill. Backward Bill, Backward Bill. He lives way up on Backward Hill which is really a hole in the sandy ground, but that's a hill turned upside down. Backward Bill's got a backward shack with a big front porch that's built out back. You walk through the window and look out the door and the cellar is up on the very top floor. It's a poem that is goofy. It is about a man called Backward Bill. We find out where he lives. And we find out a little bit about what it looks like where he lives. So I want you to think about this poem and the poems you may have heard when you were a younger kid. We're typically used to hearing a lot of rhyme in our poems. We've got Bill Hill, they rhyme. Ground down, they rhyme. Shack back, door floor. When there's lots of rhyme, it gives us a nice rhythm. You might have heard a little bit of a beat when I was reading this poem to you. And a lot of times they're silly and they're fun. They're fun to memorize and they're fun to repeat. I have another one for you. This one's called I Can Jump. Follow along as I read to you. I can jump up. I can jump down. I can jump over an ant with a frown. I can jump high. I can jump low. I can jump fast and I can jump slow. I can jump in the air as high as I can. I'm always found jumping wherever I am. I jump up and down to land on the ground. and Then I go jumping around and around. I jump in the morning. I jump when it's dark. Tomorrow, I think I'll jump in the park. So what do these poems have in common? Again, we have a lot of rhyme. Down, frown, low, slow. Can am, ground around, dark park. And when there's a lot of that rhyme, it's got a lot of rhythm. It has a lot of beat like Mrs. Vaccaro talks to you about in music class. And again, they're silly and they're fun. They're fun to read and they're fun to memorize and they're fun to perform. So these are the poems that come to my mind when I hear the word poem. Well, we're going to talk about something a little bit different today. So this is where I really need your listening ears so that you can learn the rules and what free verse poetry is. So let's talk about free verse poetry. It's going to look different than the poems we're used to. It is not going to look the same as the poems we just took a look at. Free verse poems tell a poet's thoughts, feelings, and ideas about a topic. The lines do not end with rhyming words. Poets will use a lot of descriptive words to help us get a good image in our minds on what we're reading about. They use a lot of words that help you close your eyes and picture what's going on in your mind. And they may include similes or other figurative language that also helps you get a good visual in your mind. Similes and figurative language are when the author compares the topic to something else that's not related to it. 
I'll show you an example in a little bit. So we're going to take a look at a poem today and we're going to ask ourselves the following questions. What is the topic? Do the lines rhyme? What are their descriptive words? And is there figurative language? Remember, figurative language is when an author compares the topic to something totally different. But that comparison really helps us get a good picture in our mind. So let's take a look at the poem that we have. Our poem is called Snow Shape, and it's written by Dana Williams. As I read to you, think about the topic. What is the poem about? Ask yourself, does it have rhyming words? A free verse poem will not have rhyming words. Does it use a lot of descriptive words? Are there a lot of words that really help you get a good image in your mind? And is there figurative language? Are there any comparisons that compare the topic to something totally different? Okay, I know that's a lot to think about. I'll read slow so you can think. Snow shape. Snow is falling from the sky. It gently lands on the ground. It's a bright, bright white, just like cold milk. It looks so soft and smooth. I hate to ruin it with my feet, but I have got a plan. I stand up tall and close my eyes, and then straight back I fall. I slide my arms up and down. I move my legs in and out. I stand up to see what I have made. A four-foot shape in the snow of me. So it's a totally different type of poem than what we're used to, but it has a clear focus, it has a clear topic, and it really helps us picture the thoughts and feelings the poet has about the topic. So let's go back. The first question we needed to ask ourselves is what is the topic? Let's look at text evidence. The title is Snow Shape, and the whole poem talks about snow. The author wrote this poem about snow. That's the topic. The next question we asked ourselves, do the lines rhyme? If they do not rhyme, we have ourselves a free verse poem. Let's look at our text evidence. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Sorry about that, kids. Now, usually when rhyme, lines rhyme, they're going to rhyme within one stanza. A stanza is like a paragraph. So this is a stanza. This is a stanza. This is a stanza. And this is a stanza. So in the first stanza, we have sky, ground. Do those rhyme? No. In this stanza, we have milk, smooth. Do those rhyme? No. In the third stanza, we have feet, plan, eyes, fall. Do any of those words rhyme? No. And the last stanza, we have the words down, out, made, snow, me. None of those are rhyming words either. So we do not have rhyme and we have a poem that's about snow. It's a good start to being a free verse poem. The next question we ask ourselves is what are the descriptive words? Remember descriptive words are those words that really help us get a good picture in, my, in our minds about the topic that we're reading about. So let's take a look at our text evidence. I highlighted some of the describing words for us. So it says, snow is falling from the sky. It gently lands on the ground. Close your eyes with me. When I hear those words, snow is falling on the ground, falling from the sky, it gently lands on the ground. I'm picturing snowflakes coming down. And I picture them coming down lightly. 
because it says they gently land on the ground. So I'm picturing it a very graceful snow. What are you picturing? It's falling from the sky. It gently lands on the ground. I'm not picturing a lot of snow coming down fast. I'm picturing snow coming down slowly because of those describing words, it gently lands on the ground. Those describing words help me get a better picture in my mind. And the next stanza, bright, bright white, and looks so soft and smooth, help me picture the snow a little bit more. Close your eyes while I read the next stanza. It's a bright, bright white, just like cold milk. It looks so soft and smooth. So when I close my eyes, I picture the snow laying on the ground. And I picture a very, very bright white, not a dirty white, like a white as in you just opened a new pair of socks, a new pair of a new pack of white socks when you haven't walked on the ground or you haven't gone outside in them. They're so white. That's what I picture. And I also picture, because it says it's soft and smooth, I picture scooping it up in my hand and letting it run through my fingers. You close your eyes and you think, what are you picturing from those describing words? Bright, bright white, looks so soft and smooth. Are you getting a good picture in your mind? Good, because that's what the poet wanted. The poet wants you to think about the topic snow and the poet wants you to get a good picture in your mind. The poet's not worried about rhyming words. They really want you to understand this topic. We have one more question we ask ourselves, and it's, is there figurative language? Remember, figurative language is when the poet makes a comparison from the topic to something totally different. Let's take a look. So my text evidence here that I have underlined, it's a bright, bright white, just like cold milk. It's comparing the snow, the bright, bright white snow, to a cold glass of milk. They're not the same, but it can really help us get a good picture in, my, in our minds about how white this snow is. So I used my picture in my mind about um, the new pack of socks, but it's giving us a comparison to you. So close your eyes. Picture pouring a glass of white milk. Can you picture how white? I'm also kind of picturing how creamy it is. Now take that color and think, that's what the snow looks like in this poem. That comparison is called figurative language. It compares the topic to something that's not related to it, but can help us get a good picture in our minds. Whoops, sorry kids. All right, let's move on to our review. And this is where we think about the four questions we asked ourselves to decide if our poem was a free verse poem. Let me move myself up here. We asked ourselves, what's the topic? A free verse poem will always have a clear topic, what the author is focusing on. We ask ourselves, are there rhyming words? A free verse poem will have no rhyme. We ask ourselves, are there lots of describing words? Is the author using words that help us get a really clear picture in our minds? And is there figurative language? Is the topic being compared to something else? And is that comparison giving us a good picture in our minds? Think about comparing the snow to the glass of milk. That was figurative language. And now it's time for you to do some practice. You're going to open the Google Docs activity in Google Classroom for this lesson. You're going to read a free verse poem and you're gonna answer a few questions about the questions that we learned to ask ourselves in this lesson. If you get stuck, you can send me a message in Google Classroom. You can send me an email or you can refer back to this video for some help. 
Don't forget to turn in your work when you're finished so that I can check it. And um, that's all for this lesson. I look forward to doing some more free verse poetry with you next week. And until then, have a great day, kids. Bye.